for just a quick couple slides to overview the program. So as I mentioned, this is the Vermont COVID-19 Agricultural Assistance Program. Um, this is a presentation for dairy producers. This is one of the three COVID relief programs that the agency is running right now. A uh, quick agenda, I'm gonna go over some program details. That's where we're at now. Um, we had a guest speaker yesterday, Callie Hastings, who's not with us today. So uh, that's not relevant. Um, but we can put Evie's name in there. She's a success story. And then we'll, she'll be discussing some of the common issues and uh, tips. And then, as I mentioned, we'll have a Q&A. We will eventually have these recordings up on the website on the page that's dedicated to this program. So if you want to return to them, you should be able to find them within a day or two up there. Just some quick legislative history. This program was ultimately funded by the Federal CARES Act, which allocated $1.25 billion to the state of Vermont to help mitigate economic harm suffered by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this specific program was created through S351 and subsequently Act 138 and was signed into law by Governor Scott on July 2nd. And, and established this program as well as a few others. There's $25 million was allocated to support this program for dairy farmers and producers. And the funds are intended to cover market losses, additional expenses caused by the global health emergency. One thing I wanted to point out, because we've discovered that there's a little bit of confusion around the name. Um, this We have been referring to this as a grant program. Um, it is a grant program, but what is different from this program from a lot of other grant programs is that it's not competitive. It's not something that you obviously have to develop a project proposal for or go through a competitive process to receive the funds. If you are eligible to receive funding, um, then and you can document economic harm, um, you will receive funding. So just wanted to make sure that people were clear on that. Some important dates. Um, the application is open currently and opened in July. Um, applications are sort of coming in on a rolling basis. And so the review is also happening on a rolling basis. Uh, the application closes towards the end of October, early November. And then payments are also being issued as applications are being reviewed and approved. So payment is being made by the Department of Finance and Management. So this is just the definition that is relevant for this program of a dairy processor, um, person, partnership, unincorporated association or corporation who owns or controls any place, premises, establishment where butter, cheese, cream, buttermilk, infant formula, ice cream, yogurt, or other dairy products identified by rule for the secretary are processed for sale. So hopefully you all fit that definition. I'm sure many of you do. You also need to be currently in good standing with the state of Vermont. And so this is the other component of the eligibility piece. Um, you must be currently producing milk or you were producing milk on March 1st of 2020, and subsequently, um, I should say processing milk here, um, processing milk on March 1st, 2020, and you cease production, but you have attested to having a good faith plan in place to restart production or restart operation through production of another commodity. You also must accurately demonstrate economic harm that occurred or accrued on or after March 1st, 2020, and before December 30th, 2020. And you have to provide evidence of lost revenue or expenses related to the business interruption that is directly caused by COVID-19. And then you can't be a recipient of another state grant from coronavirus, coronavirus relief funds. There is one small caveat to that, which we'll discuss later. Um, but those are the sort of main points of eligibility as a dairy processor for this program. Um, here's just a, a quick sort of 
list of general expenses and losses that are eligible to be claimed under this program. Obviously, most people are claiming um, losses related to market disruptions, declines in um, declines in outlets, um, people not being able to buy your product anymore. So that tends to be the bulk of the losses, but I think it's important to know there are several other losses that can be claimed under this. Things like personal protective equipment, um, product packaging changes, um, any workplace, any workplace changes that you've undertaken to accommodate social distancing. Um, so it's a it's a pretty broad net, and I think that's an important piece to consider. Is that anything that you incurred as far as a an additional expense or a loss that can be directly associated to COVID nineteen? So that loss or expense happen because of the pandemic, generally those things are eligible, um, eligible losses or expenses under this program. And then I wanted to share this as well because I think it's important in the context of taking the time to do this application. We understand that it, it does take some time to get all the information together to walk through the full application, um, that people are busy and have lots of things going on. And so to to carve out the time to do this is, um, you know, is not not a small task necessarily, um, but that there is real money for folks to help mitigate some of that economic harm available. So, the funding caps are based on pounds of milk per day processed, um, and you see here the three thresholds that are available. Um, I'll add to that. So, Cali. Hastings from Fat Toad mentioned yesterday, it took her about two hours to complete the full application. She thought that was a, a sort of a generous guess that it may have even been a little less than that. So I certainly can't promise how long it will take for folks, but um, I think that's good context and understanding sort of what's required. So I'm gonna stop sharing. I'll return to the slide at the end. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I am going to invite Evie to talk a little bit about what she's seen and what she's heard through the review process and working with other applicants um, and some of the issues that they've had. So Evie, take it away. Thanks, Trevor. Um, one thing I'll add on that has been a confusion point for our processors is that some weren't actively processing a dairy product in March just because of seasonality or, or things like that with the milk. And there was a, a, a list of people that um, I directly contacted to make sure they were aware that, yes, you're still eligible. It's a seasonality or, or other circumstances going on. Um, and the big thing for processors was um, were you uh, licensed and inspected um, during this time period as of March 1, 2020 and, and going from there. So um, and just thanks for everybody for being on. Um, a few things I wanted to hit on, like Callie from Fat Toad spoke about yesterday. Um, we've we've heard some things from producers or processors um, nervous about the application, and you've not seen it. And what do I know? Like what do I submit? And it has to be perfect the first time. And that's the, we would love for all of them to be perfect, but the reality is that they can't be. And, and Callie's was one where we did have to send it back for some revisions and some, some other things, and it wasn't a difficult um, process. And so she spoke really well about that yesterday. Um, and just for those that are encountering it, um, just it's it's okay if it's not perfect the first time. You don't know exactly what we're looking for as reviewers. And um, as reviewers, we know that eventually the state will be audited for all of this money that has gone through. And so we are going things and making sure to the penny that they're correct and that we can prove um, documentation of that of the funds that you got. So um, I really just wanted to start with um, a walkthrough um, of accessing and things that may have tripped people up. So I'm going to I'm going to share my my screen uh, here and you all should be able hopefully to see just the agency of ag's overall website uh, now. Um, and to access these these portals, if you just go to the Vermont Agency of Ag, um, you can Google search them or go to agriculture.vermont.gov. Um, and if you go to just the updated Vermont COVID Agriculture Assistance Program link, 
Um, there's information down here with all sorts of um, FAQs and all the different grants that the agency of ag has going on. And the one that um, pertains to you all would be the dairy assistance application. And one thing that's confused people um, is the difference between registering and then logging in. Um, and registering for the program, you only have to do that one time. Even if you're a farmstead operation where you have a farm and you're also a processor, so you had two unique IDs, um, you just have to register once, um, and then you will log in to the, to the program to actually enter those two applications. But the registration page uh, looks like this. Um, and it has a bunch of different statements to read through um, and just one is just educating on what the money's for and what you should be applying for and things like that. Um, and once you click yes that you understand the above, there's just some basic questions of where you producing milk or, or processing. And again, for those that are seasonal, um, you still click yes to this um to keep continuing forward and then from there you would type in your unique id number um, into this field and it would then auto populate your name and i am actually going to use uh let me check real quick i've already created this application and, and what i'm showing you all is our um, testing site so we have a testing site um, where we are actively uh, making sure that the program is working and any updates or changes that are going on, we're doing this here. So what I'm showing you is what you'll see on your end of things, um, but this isn't the actual active um, portal. Um, so, and it liked my password, heck yeah. Do, 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 do. And we're just going to use this number for a processor. And you should show up um, if you enter your ID correctly. It is sensitive to having the dash number and all of those things. Um, but from there, you're just filling in um, your registration, your name, um, title, and your email. And one thing that has tripped up some people is that you will see your email will be put in whatever email you enter into this and automatically your username adds .vt grants. So just be cautious of that, that your email will not actually be the login name you'll use, but it'll be your email plus .vt grants. So once you enter all this information and hit register, um, it has you in the, the, the database. And so I'm gonna take you into the actual database and if you wanted to if you just registered and that's all that you managed to do that day and that was enough technology for the day if you come back to our agency's web page as i'm scrolling through now all you have to do is go to the login page and you would enter in your username with the dot vt grants whatever passwords you set up um, and then it offers you to actually start entering. So this is the live site. I'm not going to dabble in that at all because I don't want to break anything. I'm going to go back to my uh, safe testing site. So um, let me go back to my dashboard. So um, from here, and let me move this back to dashboard. All right. So when you log into the actual page that was that I showed off of the um, the agency ag page, you're just going to click on new application, and there's a bunch of options in here um, because the same company that is providing this um, portal for all of these different CARES Act grants, it's the same company. So there's a bunch of different things listed here, um, but if you are applying as a processor as the actual plant that's making a um, turning milk into a value added product, this is the, the form that you would wanna select. If you're applying as a farmer on the farm side of producing the milk, you would want the dairy producer application program. So if you hit select, it creates, um, it just opens up a new window, slowly but surely. 
There we go. And then you would enter in your unique ID number again, and then you would go through if your W-9, if it was submitted to the agency and preloaded, this would preload and you would hit the yes button, um, making sure the information is correct. If you haven't already submitted your W-9, you would just manually type in this information and then you would upload your W-9. So I'm going to go back to one of the applications that I am using to, to test right now. Um, and this one already had information preloaded. So I'm gonna start the actual application. So this is what you'll see once you get through the, the W9 information. And if anybody has questions pop up as I'm going through this, just, um, just please let me know and I'm happy to stop. Um, but there's just some basic um, eligibility questions. And depending on how you answer means whether you can proceed or not. So if you do have uh, an enforcement violation, um, which there's only a handful of people that do, um, you wouldn't be able to apply for this. But shouldn't be an issue for any of our processors. Um, and I'm just going to click through these real quick. And yes, I've had harm. And again, um, if you were um, still like on March 1, if you weren't processing, but you're an active milk handler and you were sent your, your milk handler number basically to apply, you would click yes here. And you're just going to go through and mark which months um, you have you have losses. And so the application is fairly um, basic in that whichever one of these bars that you select for a month, and it can be all or none, you should only be selecting months that have occurred. Um, you have to upload files. It only allows um, one document per upload. So it's really important to get your, your comparison files together, whether it's a document that you are um, swearing to just in a Word document or Excel, and this is what my income statement or profit and loss statements are for 2019 compared to 2020. Um, or if you have a QuickBooks export that you can use um, and you would need to get those files together to then upload here. And again, you can have multiple documents within one file, but you can't attach multiple files. Um, one thing that we've seen with people um, putting in information, um, especially if it's from QuickBooks, is to please um, make sure that the, the title that it auto populates um, says the correct month. Um, we've we've been tripped up a little bit as reviewers with that, and I'm sure that um, for you all, if it's QuickBooks or your your Excel documents or whatever you use for your bookkeeping, um, you all could probably recite the information in there in your sleep. For us as reviewers, it is completely foreign to us, and so if you have a lot of different cells that are broken out, um, you know, I, the farmers market sales, retail, or or these other things, and you really want to just lump sum what your net sales were in 19 for that month compared to 2020. Um, it's been really helpful for viewers if you just put an asterisk or you highlight it in yellow or what you're actually pulling your numbers from. Um, but just utilizing the system, it's very basic. Hit the upload file and let's just pick a document. Uh, it will take Word, it'll take a PDF, it'll take um, just a basic template file or Excel, whatever you have. It's been tested rigorously um, by a lot of us at the agency and it'll accept any document. And these are just dummy documents I'm inputting. Um, if it will not allow you to go forward, if you just mark this and don't upload, it, it will um, fuss at you. So you do have to um, designate those. And again, you can do multiple months, um, what have you with that. And then also for our processors, um, so this is the section for your profit and loss and overall change in sales. Um, and then this is where you can document what your pre and, and post COVID sales were. So um, you're just entering dollar amounts. And uh, uh, it's um, it's it's been all across the board what we have seen um, coming in. We've seen some people that have actually put in zeros, especially if all of their sales were to a farmer's market, for instance, um, and the market closed. 
Um, and for that case, documentation could be one, your profit and loss. And then in another part of this application, um, I'll show you where you could put some more details in. So same song and dance um, with these. Um, you have to upload some sort of, of document. And again, the file type does not matter. It only allows for one document. And these documents should show um, for the reviewers and for whoever audits us one day down the road, um, anything with, with money going out, there's going to be audits <laughs> for the state. And we just have to be able to show that, you know, these dollar amounts, whatever this was, it shows in this document, the changes in it and, and here as well. Um, what we also would highly encourage is that please, um, Please elaborate as much as you can in these comments, because again, a lot of this information is foreign to us in, in the unique um, ways that your business is structured and where your avenues of sales or where things were lost are. Um, so the more details, the the better, just for us and being able to understand where, where things happen. Um, and again, you can add as many months as has occurred. Please do not um, add in September, for instance, because September has not um, completed unless there's a situation where um, a restaurant has completely closed business and you can show on your profit and loss that this business closed and you, know, you will not have sales for the rest of the year. Um, I will also add that if you do not um, cap out on your first application run through, there is um, the ability to submit an additional application later on in the year. So that's one thing we've heard from a lot of people is that, you know, this time frame hasn't um, completed and I want to be able to, to capitalize on this. You could go ahead and submit what you've lost to date and then come in and then add other information later on. Um, the program only allows for you to do this um, twice. So just make sure that the, the two are good. But if you submit an application and there's an issue or an error, the, the back and forth between the reviewer and you and getting the original application correct um, with, with losses, that doesn't count as a strike against you. It's two um, kind of from scratch submittals. Um, so here, if you had, if if I was was filling this out um, for my counterpart, Greg Lockwood, if Greg had a plant um, and I was doing this for Greg because he didn't want to deal with technology, I could go in and I could add Greg's information here um, so that it would be in there as a contact and get um, notification emails and whatnot. So. All right. Um, and so this section is where a lot of unique information can be entered. The, the previous section really had to deal with just strictly profit and losses. Um, what it didn't include could be all sorts of other equipment or, or that you had to purchase to pivot. Um, there could be you had to purchase PPE to protect you and your staff um, or additional cleaning and sanitizing supplies. Um, we we typecasted and put in some standard things that we thought could potentially be across the board, um, but we also left numerous lines for people to put in information um, that is a is a unique situation um, for them. So um, there's a lot of things that can be included in other economic harm. Um, it could be that you needed to get uh, modernize your website or completely change how you were um, shipping product. You were doing everything retail and now you are doing sales online or if you had to hire a firm to help you with those. If you added a new product and you had to buy labels um, to help move more product because of COVID, those are things with proper documentation um, that could be um, funded through this program. Um, we've had people that had to purchase new equip equipment or they had to expand where they were aging their cheeses because they're running out of room. Like as long as you can document 
that these purchases was because of COVID-19 and in response to it as your business pivoted and tried to adjust, those things would be eligible. Um, some other interesting things, we've we've seen a bit more of this mainly on the farm side, but it would still be eligible for processors would be um, if um, you had to hire an additional worker because you lost your child care support um, because of COVID and daycare centers closing. And so a spouse or a partner um, had to take care of children and you had to hire an additional employee um, because of COVID and there was no daycare. That's something that you could put in here. And what we really just encourage is that whatever whatever dollar amount you put in here, you're going to have to, again, upload a documentation file. Um, and just please make sure, um, one, that either the document shows the financial information and the math of how you arrived to something. If you had to hire um, if you had to hire a new employee that you're breaking down um, the actual hours that they're working, that they're replacing of the other person. And this text box here is really, really important for just really putting in key details. Um, putting in something of just see attachment doesn't doesn't help the reviewers if we have questions, but you could put in information on the, the math or how you calculated it or just the, the reason for um, this expense. So, um, Um, and we've had people that put in a significant long paragraph of, of, of things, and it's been super helpful for the reviewers just to see where this is, is coming from. Um, and then if you had applied for um, funding that may have may represent a duplicative payment um, for any reason, um, you can put that dollar amount in here. The system automatically calculates um, the numbers that have been put in and then also any of the duplicative payments to take out. And when you get through this whole section, you can hit the next button. Um, and one thing to warn about, the system does not save your information on the page until you complete it and hit that next button. So when you see the wheel spinning, it has saved that page. Um, and so if you had to log out or it timed out on you when you were pulling other documents, you may lose some of the information on that page and have to re-enter. So there's a review page to go through everything that you have. It's really important to make sure that these attachments are showing that you put in. If for some reason you don't see these attachments, it may have not uploaded correctly. If you do it again and it's still not working, um, then there may be a bug or an issue going on with the program and you can reach out to our, our, our COVID helpline and we can, can get it figured out. Um, so the very last things I'm just going through and it looks like it took everything and looks okay. I'm gonna hit the next button. And then the very last page, um, you do have to pick uh, an option here, this was put in statute by the legislature. If you're interested in technical assistance and if you're not, you can hit the, the button. And so far, we've we've gotten some very sweet responses if people weren't interested in anything and, and nothing too mean. So that's very nice people. Um, <laughs> then the very last bit is just these statements, which um, these are what I would consider legally binding statements um, of your swearing that this information is correct. Um, and and all of that fun stuff, um, all the, the legalese um, that I, makes me happy. I'm not an attorney and just prefer talking to cows or, or other critters. And the very last part, you will put your name in there and you will hit submit. And once you hit um, submit, you can still log back into this portal um, and you can actually see the status of your application. So when you hit submit, that's what actually goes through our program, and we'll let the reviewers see it. Um, if we have to mark it incomplete because something needs to be edited or we just need more explanation, you would get an email notification, um, but you would also be able to see that it was marked incomplete if we mark it, recommend for approval, and then it gets secondary review to be approved. Um, all of that would show up here, and also when it's actually awarded and, and payment goes out. So that would be on this dashboard um, with your, your login. So that is kind of a, a quick run through of what the application actually looks like. 
Um, and if there are questions or other things with that or Trevor or Laura or Diane, if there's other things that you all would like to cover, um, just please um, have at it with your questions because we really want this to be an opportunity for, for you all to be able to ask specific business questions or how you may um, calculate something. Yeah, thanks, CB. I think that was a, a great overview of the application. I know there it looks like there's a couple people on the phone, so apologies. I think you missed some of the visuals there. But as I mentioned at the beginning, this will be recorded and put up on the website and the program page. So if you want to go and sort of get that visual walkthrough that EB just provided, um, you can get that there. So as she mentioned, I think now we'd, we're, we're going to open it up to folks. Um, we have Lots of people, um, at least three, who've been really heavily involved with this process and are super knowledgeable here to answer your questions. So um, it's all fair game. If you have specific business questions, that's fine. Um, or if you have more general questions, whatever is on your mind. So I'll go ahead and, and open it up for anybody who has questions. So, oh, and if people don't have questions, I'll I'll start some some discussion from yesterday. We had a, a cheese processor that um, has cheeses that um, can be aged longer. Um, they're not uh, they're they're an alpine type style cheese, and they can survive being aged longer. And so the question was, normally they would have been sold, um, but they lost markets for that, and so they have more um, labor tied up with caring for these cheeses until they'll be able to sell them. And, and they were asking, you know, is that something that's eligible? And yes. And the, the main discussion yesterday was just, you know, write a note or put in a Word document just showing, you know, this was what my normal sales would be. And because of COVID, this place closed or I lost this avenue to, to move this product. Um, and then to break down the hours um, that have gone into it labor wise to keep caring for this cheese and then what that dollar amount is per hour to give us your final number. Just put that in as an attachment under other expense and then type in that dollar amount and, and that could be a, an adequate documentation of a, of a loss that's been occurred and an expense that's been occurred by the business because of COVID. This is Laura. Um, I would just add to Evie's presentation that one thing we've also found is that when you're doing the application, particularly in the other economic harm section, once you click on a line item and enter information into that, particularly if you upload a file, don't uncheck the line as a way to perhaps minimize it as, as you might do if you have drop down menus and other applications or websites, because that actually will remove it from your application. And so as soon as you check a line and put information in it, just leave that, even though it makes your screen longer and you've got to scroll past it each time. And nobody's using the chat. So if you don't want to speak up if you just want to enter something into the chat that's fine too and we can address questions from there another thing i'll mention if you brought up the website i think that's if folks are just starting this process that's really the best place to start there's a ton of resources on the program page that uh, people can access, application guides that will walk you through the whole process, contact information uh, for phone numbers and email addresses. Vermont Housing Conservation Board is also available to provide assistance with this application. Um, there's a growing list of FAQs that we are constantly updating based on feedback. So. Um, if people are just getting started or in different places in the process, um, that's that's a great place to start or a great place to find resources. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm curious about the uh, comment that was just made, I guess, from yesterday about longer age cheeses. Um, so if one were to apply for some funding 
if say they have cheese that they would normally sell it a year that they're going to have to hold on to for two or three years. Um, at what point? So is, are we being compensated for the added cost of holding on to and aging that cheese? And is there a point where we would have to then account for that later? That's, hey, Angela, that's, yeah, that, that's a fun one. <laughs> Um, um, so the, it, it has, blah, blah. so the legislature gave the funding, um, and it has to be from a time period of March one until what they gave us to was through the end of September. If you have, um, if you have like a known expense, like there is no chance that you're going to be selling this cheese for another year or, or things like that. Um, please document it in detail and then we could run it through in this um, situation to see um, how much of it or how long it could be um, covered. So it was not quite encountered for, you know, years and years down the road kind of situation. Um, mm -hmm. But we have had people where they, they created a new cheese that they're making um, instead of a wash rind cheese or doing something. And, and so they have, allotted for like a loss in revenue because this has to age longer and it will be a significant amount of time. And so those are some things we've looked at. So um, I would submit it and just give us a lot of nitty gritty detail so we can can get it figured out and be able to justify like these are, are eligible. So Laura, do you have any comments on that? I think um, legislatively from the federal government side of things, we can only cover economic harm through December 20th of this year. And so like EB said, um, the month to month financial losses are through September. But if you knew that you were going to be like, say you had a forward contract from somebody to buy cheese through October, November and December of this year, you could capture that in the other economic harm section of your application if that forward contract was canceled, for example. Or some folks we know attend events and sell a lot of cheese um, and the events themselves have been canceled. So it's not that you don't want to attend, it's that the event or the governor or somebody else has canceled the event. And so those other, if they're not captured in the financial statements, put them in the other economic harm, particularly if they fall in the October to December timeframe, and we can certainly consider them. Great. Thank We've you. got a, yeah, you're welcome. We've got a question in the chat from Roberta about with two applications, the same dairy plant number is used. Um, I think we need a little bit more. If, if you have two, Evie can probably speak to this better. Yep. So, um, Roberta, the, the two numbers you would be sent is one for the, the processing facility, which would be a, a 50 dash number. Um, and then the farm side would be um, if it was like your if your number I'm just making up was 50 dash one, two, three, your farm number is more than likely one, two, three dash one in our in our dairy database. And if you don't remember um, what numbers were sent to you. Um, just let me know and I can email you what those those numbers are so you can get them in um, correctly. So it's, it's really based on what your your license with the dairy section. Um, so some of our farms may have a different farm number at the ends, but just if you're not sure what they are, shoot me an email and I can get those to you. And then the second part of Roberta's question is a great one about the second application process. So we are developing the second application. Um, it should be ready to go for people to submit a second application within the next um, week to 10 days or so. The point to remember though is that you can't submit a second application until you submit and have an approved first application. So that's kind of the gateway to be able to claim additional losses. Some people are waiting, I mean, it's September 1st and the application itself closes on September 30th. And so you could wait, we, we would encourage people not to wait um, because it can take some time to get the application right. But essentially you could submit your application today. We would most likely review it um, in the next couple of days, 
And then if you felt like you hadn't captured all of your losses or additional expenses, you'd have until the end of the month to submit a second application. So it's not a huge stretch of time that you'd be waiting um, to submit the second one. The second one is the same essential field. So it's not that there's financial loss information for October to December because legislatively we can only capture those specific months. So you're just filling out more information if you want to capture more of September sales loss, for example. Maybe here, Laura, could you speak a little bit to Callie and mentioned sort of the turnaround time from when she had the application submitted to when um, she received the the payment? Do you have a sort of a ballpark on that for people? Yeah, I don't know, Laura, if you remember um, exactly what Callie said yesterday, but um, we can get these reviewed and turned over quickly. There's one day a week that we send over the actual dollar amounts to be issued by the state. Um, and so we send them over in weekly batches. So if you can get your application submitted and if it's a okay and we can send it for funding, it can be a week turnaround. If you have corrections to make, as long as it's done before we send that week's batch over for funding, we can get people um, submitted and approved and paid um, like at least before the check is issued within a week. So you could see that it was awarded um, and I'm not sure how long it's taking for the physical checks to get out to people, but um, they are getting delivered. <laughs> so, Yeah, I was looking this morning um, at the applications that were sent over for payment today, and one was a dairy farm. They submitted their application for the first time on the afternoon of August 27th. We assigned it, EBU assigned it that afternoon. The first round reviewer reviewed it and everything was fine on the 28th and I approved it yesterday and it went for payment today. And so within five days, four days, that person has successfully completed and submitted their application and they'll most likely get a check within the next seven days. So it can be very fast. Um, we assign them and start reviewing them the day that they come in. So there's no lag there. Generally, what slows the process down is if there's um, issues with the application that we've got to work through, and if on the applicant side, if the applicant is is real busy and can't get to it right away, then it can increase the amount of time. Other questions that people might have? One thing that uh, Kelly also mentioned, I think is, is good information coming from someone outside the agency is that she had really quick turnaround on questions that she had. Um, so she found that people were very responsive. She used a couple of the different contact means to get answers to questions and those came back to her pretty, um, pretty fast and she seemed really happy about that. So uh, there are lots of people within our agency that are moderating the a COVID inbox, the phone lines. Um, there's a chat bot function on the website that can answer many of the questions that you have. So um, please do reach out if there are, there are any issues with the process. We've got another question from a late joiner. Um, about where we can find the recorded video of this. We'll be putting it on the program webpage, which I'll copy and paste the link in again to the chat. And so in a day or two, most likely you'll see a copy of either this recording or the one from yesterday, which similar content was covered. So I think one of the things 
that's come up a lot and I think it's slowing folks down some is that they start the application and realize that they need to find certain documents to prove um, income or expenses or losses. So one point with that is that the program will save each page, page as you go through it. When you log in and log out and log back in, you'll have to start at the beginning, but you don't have to fill out the sections again. You just have to click through pages that you've already filled out. So it's a sort of a slight annoyance, but it doesn't mean that you've lost any of that information that you've done. Um, but you know, people are getting a couple forms into the application and then realizing, oh, I, you know, I need my July 2019 income statement then having to either go dig that out of the, the filing cabinet or call their accountant or print it off of their QuickBooks or however that might work. So um, we have a list on the website and some of our resources of uh, documents that you'll need to complete that. So that's your W-9, a lot of income statements. As Evie has mentioned, um, we really just need folks to be pretty explicit about documenting specific losses. And so what we've seen a number of instances is people uploading an entire profit and loss statement for a year and then claiming a very specific loss, but not indicating on that statement where we might be able to find that loss. So it's our goal to have everybody have all the eligible losses and expenses included in their application, but it might help to think about it from sort of an auditor's standpoint. We need to be able to prove, okay, yes, here's, here's clear indication, here's clear documentation that um, this did occur. Any other questions that people have? If not, I look for, forward to a flooding of applications to overwhelm Laura and I. <laughs> there is still plenty of money in the program. Um, so we, we can see sort of who started application, who submitted obviously, and there's a, a big group of folks who've started and we hope that they do um, complete that process uh, as we'd love to get this money out to the folks who need it as soon as we can. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen one more time. If I can figure this out. All right, can everybody see that? Yes, we can. So as I mentioned, there's this is just a list of the common documents that um, you'll need to complete the application. So a good place to start. Things like federal programs, if you've received a PPP loan or economic impact development, economic, I uh, forget in DL, but the EIDL program, which is another federal program, um, you'll need documentation of that as well. This is a list of some of the resources. Um, some more resources and support contacts. We mentioned the Vermont Housing Conservation Board is available to help. Um, we have had a few people who are not digitally inclined and have been looking for paper applications. So unfortunately, that's not an option with this program, but um, folks are encouraged to call EHCB or let us know if they're running into that problem and there are people who can help those who don't have access to a computer or may not be, may not have the, the knowledge of how to sort of 
walk through a digital application, um, they can help with that. And then again, just this is just a website, really the, the sort of best place in the in the landing spot for any and all resources and information about this program. Okay, well, I'll, I'll put it out to the group one more time. We have about five minutes left, but um, any last questions that people have? All right, I want to thank you all for joining us. I want to thank EB and Laura for providing their knowledge and expertise on this. As I mentioned, um, we're here to help, so please shoot us an email, call us. Um, and let us know if there's anything that we can help to facilitate completing an application and moving through the process. Um, there will, we will, as mentioned earlier, put this recording up on the website on the program page. And there's also a, a, several other webinars up there about this application as well. So thank you all for coming. Um, hope you stay well and take care of yourselves. And, Hope to see that glut of submitted applications that Evie talked about. Thank you, Ara. Thanks, all. Thank you.